Hey, Mick, oh, how are hi, you? Reggie. Mick. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for taking time. I appreciate it. Sure. Man, I was just listening, honestly, about three or four times a day, just some late last-minute prep. Man, I have been listening to Walk the Earth all day already, and <laughs> I feel like I know this album pretty well, man. It's, I've listened to it probably about 10, 15 times so far, and man, I'm just blown away by this record. Walk the Earth comes out October 20th, and um, it's, a, it's a nice 10-song record, nice, you know, Everything you can look for, powerful, beautiful. Um, there's a couple songs that stand out to me, but I want to talk a little bit about working with Dave Cobb. What was it like working with Dave this time around? And what did he really bring out of you guys? Um, uh, you know, uh, the first time, uh, you probably know, of course, uh, the first time we worked with him was on that album before this one, mm -hmm. um, War Kings. Yeah. And we were just so happy to, to that he wanted to work with us because we thought that, I mean, we really love the stuff that he, the sound he he did for uh, Rival Sons, and and uh, so we just sort of took a chance and just asked him, would you be interested at all in working with us? And he said, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I used to listen to 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 your albums when I was younger, and I used to play drums to your albums, and yeah, I, sure, I want to do it. And we were like, what? Oh, really? Wow, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> We kind of thought he was too cool to do it. And for this album, what happened uh, in between um, the War Kings album and uh, when we were uh, about to, to go in the studio and, and, and record the latest album, he got really a big shot, you know, producing all this, uh, these uh, country guys and also Rival Sons, of course. And he, I mean, he, he was as a... Grammys and whatever, uh, so so we thought, ah, oh, this time it's not going to work, but we'll give it a shot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so we asked him, and and he said, uh, he said yes, and and it was uh, just great. And I, I think maybe a reason might have been that we decided to to work in in uh, Abbey Road Studios in in London, nice. uh, legendary where Beatles, Pink oh, Pink awesome. Floyd, everybody was working worked there. Yeah, it was great. And and I think he re that really triggered him to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Say. But you know what what he brings out? He's very uh, good at you know he, he can sense a vibe. If there's something that doesn't that's not right within the whole. Um, um, Within all the people in the group, he sort of sends that, and he can so he works around it and sort of makes everything work smooth. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think he had a blast working at Abbey Road Studios. Really, yeah, nice. I mean, you guys are one of the most iconic band, but prolific and icon iconic bands of the last probably twenty, thirty years. But walking into a studio like Abbey Road, I mean. Do you, what, what do you feel walking into that studio, recording in that studio? I mean, what was that experience like? Uh, you know what? I, when I got there, I, before walking in, uh, before starting recording or anything, I just thought, because I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. And I'm a huge fan of a lot of groups and artists that uh, that's, that's, has worked there or have, have I've worked there, and but 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 but, so I basically just said to myself, "This is just another studio. We're just going to make another album, and it's not anything special." But you know, being there, we got all this talking to all the people that work there, and we heard all these stories about where uh, the guys from the Beatles used to sneak out from George Martin and smoke <laughs> smoke some weed. You know, where they had this little place where they went to, you know, like an echo cha chamber. Okay. And they showed us all these places where everything happened back in the day. Oh. And also the, the it, was, it was just magic. And, you know, and, and so when we were, when I was sitting on the plane on the way, on the way back to Stockholm, I was just, I, somehow I realized wh where, where I had been. And I sort of got really, I had this, almost religious feeling and you said for oh I'm so happy that I've been in the Abbey Road and I've done all 
what we've done there. We made an album there, and I'm so proud of it and so happy that we did. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, a few years ago, I got to still go into the studio where some of my favorite albums of all time were recorded. And there's just studios like that. There's just an, an energy in those studios sometimes in those rooms. And you're like, I know I'm somewhere special, you know, and it's just yeah. it's really cool to be in those rooms. Uh, but earlier you talked about, you know, Dave telling you that he grew he listened to you guys all the time when he was younger. I mean, this far in your career, do you still you know, are you still taken taken aback when people within the industry, like managers and producers, tell you stuff like that, or does it is it something you don't really think about? Um, I mean, we were really surprised that he said that because because uh, we didn't think he was into that kind of music when okay. he was younger, but, but apparently he was. So 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 we were. That is, oh yeah, I mean that's. That means something, of course it does, because then you know that the person know your history, and, mm-hmm. uh, and hopefully they sort of um, like where we're taking turns these days, you know. Yeah, definitely, and I, I love this this record, but War of Kings especially because I mean, like you said, the 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 work that he's done, you, it really shows through 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 you guys for this record and the last one. I mean. It's you guys go down a lot of different musical avenues and roads with this record, and you kind of continue what you yeah. where you where you left off with the record with War of Kings, but this record stands on its own as well. And a couple of the songs that really stand out, obviously the title track blows you away from the start, but Pictures, the ballad is just so beautiful, and it's in, it's in there at just the right time. And I mean that that song, yeah. you slow it down perfectly, you pick it right back up. But where does a song like Pictures come from? Oh, it's a long story, actually. But I, I agree with you. I think that song is, is magic. And I think we all mm-hmm. in the band just love that song. Um, it, I, it actually started a long time ago uh, when uh, I would say in the late 90s, uh, probably, or maybe, well, around the century changing. Um, because Joey was doing solo albums at the time. He did three solo albums. And um, he asked me to sort of uh, write some songs with him. And so we checked out a few songs. And this, that he had the embryo to this song. But it was a much, it was like double tempo. And it was oh, more wow. like a pop song, hmm. you know, like a, a, I don't know how to explain it. But it was very different. But the chords were still there. Hmm. And then he... Uh, he he. We were sitting, uh, just him and me, trying to to write some stuff. And he he talked about this old song that we tried to do something with years ago. Hmm. And he said, "But but you didn't didn't like that, did you?" And I said, "Yeah, I liked it, but it was too much of a it didn't. It was too fast. So he tried to slow it down, and he did a, like a um, like more more like a ballad, or hmm. I would say like a." almost like a David Bowie ballad or something mm-hmm. um, with some weird chord changes and stuff in it. And finally, we, uh, we got it right. And, and, uh, but, but that's the story of the song. It actually started years ago. Um, but here it is now. Nice. So never throw, throw, never throw away an old idea. Just keep right. it there in the drawer until it's the right moment, you know? Right. And so, I mean, if it doesn't work before, you never know. It may work down the road. And thank God it worked this time because I can see this. I can see pictures being honestly one of the one of the biggest, you know, right up there with some of the classics like you know, like Carrie and stuff like. I mean, this song is just it hits you, you know. I mean, it, you just don't get wow, sick of listening cool. to it, cool. you know. <laughs> I'm I'm glad you guys reworked that because I mean, I can't, I can't picture that song sped up, and I just I can't see that, you know. It's it's. It's great just the way it is. And then The Siege and then the final song, Turn to Dust, those two songs as well, just I think are two of the – those are four of the biggest standout tracks of the album so far, I think, from just what I've listened to so far. And uh, I feel like Turn to Dust is just the perfect way to – the title track is the perfect way to start the album. Turn to Dust is like a great ending to the record. It just goes – speeds up, slows down, great guitars. I mean, it's it's great. You know, so I mean, there's so many just yeah, cool, yeah, so many cool nuggets on this record. 
I mean, it's going to be wow, good. Wow, cool. I'm so happy. Happy to hear that, man. Yeah, I wish it wasn't out in like another two weeks. I want people to hear it now. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, but last year, you did something cool. You did a, you did a stretch of 30th anniversary shows for the final countdown. And what I right. a lot of people don't realize, maybe they do, is you guys have the same core lineup that you had back then when that album released for the most part. Um, what stands out about, you know, that stretch of shows that you, that you did last year? And I think it's a testament that you guys with this lineup have been together as long as you have been. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I think we really see it as important to try and keep, although, I mean, we have our arg arguments from time to time. Mm -hmm. Definitely we do. But I think, uh, part we think it's it's very important to to keep the band together with the same guys mm -hmm. because we all grew up in the same neighborhood just north of Stockholm like a suburban area and we're sort of grew up listening to the same music I mean we have so much in common and also we we you know we had like a, a, a big coffee break for for 12 years yeah um, where where we you know we did whatever we wanted to do um, and um, played with different artists and mm -hmm. made solo albums or whatever we produced albums and during that time we kind of realized that the magic that we have within the band uh, we couldn't really find the same thing anywhere else although so, some of the uh, people we worked with it was, it was great collaborations, but, but, but still, we couldn't find the same energy and the same vibe anywhere else but within Europe, the band Europe, I mean. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so I think that was really important, too. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, some bands feel, some bands like to take, you know, when they're on the road, when they're not recording, take time away from each other. Some bands like to, you know stick to, you know, spend all of the time in the world together. I feel like it's important to find that balance, but not many bands can say that they've had the same lineup for as long as you guys have, you know, it, it's hard, it's That's hard true. to do, That's you true. know, just, I, I can't think of very many. Um, but those, uh, those final countdown anniversary shows, I mean, what really stands out to you about that, about those shows that you did last year? Oh, uh, you know what? We were really worried. I mean, we we said we have to do something, uh, but we didn't want to stretch it out because sure. we thought that was going to be a pain in the ass playing <laughs> all those songs that we <laughs> that we wrote in the eighties. <laughs> but to be honest, it was really fun, and we had great fun doing it. So, I mean, I don't think we would. Uh, uh, you know, it was really fun playing. Surprisingly fun to to play those songs. So, um, I mean, if the opportunity comes up, I mean, I don't think we would mind doing it uh, on occasions in the sure. future, too, because, yeah. Sure. I mean, there's something special about about that record and that song that you, you almost want to keep, you know, doing something like that too often and too much, I feel like takes away from the the importance and the uniqueness of of that song and that record and that time. And so, I mean, I feel like there's a like a fine line you have to walk so that you don't, you know, take away from it, but you still need to keep it, you know, keep it important as well and celebrate it. So I, I feel like the way you guys did it was the best way to do it, um, for sure. Well, yeah, cool. So, um, but uh, next month, you guys are hitting the road. You're going through Europe with Deep Purple, which... Is I wish I could be out there to see those shows because I just saw Purple last month or the month before, and outstanding. I mean, how much are you looking forward to that that run? I mean, that is that's got to be fun. Oh yeah, I mean we're just doing it. I mean, there's just there's no money for us. We just well when they asked us, we were just like, yeah, we're doing it. no matter <laughs> yeah. how, what the cost is. You know, we just well we I mean. We survived, but but you know right. what I mean. It was we purely did it for the hell of it because we really. I mean, we grew up with that band. I mean, yeah. it's, they they are so much a part of our of 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 in a way, big part of of the music we, that we write today. You know, mm -hmm. so and did did before too. 
so 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 it's it's just great. And also, you know, I I, I talked to uh, Ian Gillan on on the phone a, a while ago when they released the latest album, mm-hmm. and uh, I asked him, so is this really your last uh, tour that you do? And he said more or less that, you know, he he just hated bands. He he said he he hates bands that that you know say this is the final tour thank you and yeah. then they end the tour and there's all these people coming and they think well we can do another one and mm-hmm. so, so he he didn't he didn't want to say this was a final tour but he said like I don't think we will do any more tours after this one maybe a right. show here and there but so uh, and in, with that in mind I think I really want to see them. You know, it's probably the last time. I'm, not, I mean, I'm actually going to mm-hmm. see them in in Stockholm as well. Right. Uh, just a couple of weeks before uh, we we play with them. We we well before we start on on the tour. But but you know, it's I, I I'm so much looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. And I feel the same. I feel the same way as him. It's it's always you almost get jaded when you hear a band say this is going to be our final tour because nine times out of ten it's really not so i feel like the best way to do it is to do you know do an extended run maybe a year or two three year run and say this might be the last one we're not sure just let the end come when it's time and you know i feel like when it's time to hang it up you just know that it's time if you have any inkling that there's more touring to do don't say that it's the last tour, because <laughs> you, you know Not exactly. Ex- yeah. So, but speaking of touring, last year, I, uh, what's that? No, I, I was just going to say. Uh, speaking about that, you know, the farewell tour, the goodbye tour. I had this idea too that when we are going to do our uh, goodbye tour, we, we should call it uh, the goodbye for now tour. <laughs> Back again. So. <laughs> so maybe goodbye, maybe see you later. We might be back to her. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. See you later. Too. Right. <laughs> um, but the, the last record you did a pretty good. You get a pretty good U.S. run, and I, I would like, I would, I'm hoping that you guys do another U.S. run, another, you know, track in the in the states with um, with Walk the Earth. Is that something you guys have have talked about? Maybe booked, but can't announce anything yet. Or can we look for some U.S. dates with this record? I really hope so. I mean, it all depends on if there's a, um, like an, an agent that, that feels that, that we can do a, a, a tour that we don't lose too much money on. Right. Or that we it's, it's hopefully, pro- I mean, it, it's all to do with, with trying to, to get food on the table, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, I really hope we, we can do another U.S. tour because, uh, I mean, we just love touring the U.S. I mean, it's all so smooth, just works fine. The fans are great. And, and oh, yeah. um, I know we have a lot of fans. Uh, so, so, yes, I really hope so. But uh, probably not until, let me think now, it would probably not be until about uh, at the earliest uh, a year from now. Gotcha. I guess, but, yeah. but, you know. I mean, we're so late into 2017 so, right now, so anything that gets announced would be for 2018 already. So, I mean... Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. So, well, hopefully we see you guys on the road out here, but to wrap it up, I mean, Walk the Earth, for you personally, as one of the songwriters, what does Walk the Earth mean to you personally? And what do you think it says about Europe? Um... Well, to me personally, it means that uh, that was actually, you know, I, I, when I started writing on, on that song, I, I I actually wrote it as a, a possible film score, you know. That, hmm. da, 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 I can see that. that. That thing. Yeah, yeah. And I thought I had the idea to, to make it a, a film score. But then it, there's a part in the show that where I sometimes just improvise and just play whatever I feel like doing. I, I never play the same thing and just improvise on, on, on piano on, sure. on stage. And I just slipped in, into that part. And Joey heard that. And so he said, oh, man, that's great. Let's make a song out of it. Nice. But then I felt, well, it's, uh, it's for a film score, man. We can use that. But then I thought, well, let's make it, um, let's put a heavy part in. So I sort of finally came, came up with this, da-da, da-da, da-da. To, to sort of 
have a contrast between that beautiful part oh. and that more, more you know, yeah. evil part or the heavy, heavy part, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, uh, and Joey got a really good vibe. Um, I think that triggered him to to uh, to do the uh, to, to write some lyrics about something that I'm not really sure <laughs> of what what it means, but it gives me a good feeling. All the words, I just love all the words are perfect in yeah. in, in the song, and um, so so I I, I really think um, um, and also well yes I have to credit. Um, Dave Cobb as well, because he was involved too. To he, it was his idea to sort of bring it down in the, okay. in the choruses. You know, just the first half of the chorus. That was sure. his idea, and to some chord changes there. And I, that was just that made the whole song um, come alive. And so I, I, I definitely think that's a song that sticks out a bunch on on this album. I really love that song. I think it's probably the best song we've written in in years. Perfect. I mean, I feel like it's the perfect way to open a show. Honestly, I can just the lights go down, the yeah. lights come up. You guys taste the stage, and just that song so dynamic, dynamic, and I've always thought it had kind of a cinematic feel to it. But that explains a lot what you just said. That that makes yeah. sense. So, yeah. um, man, the album is so good. Nick, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. Um, the album should be as well yeah, received cool. as it is with me. So, um, man, hopefully we'll see you at a show in the in the states here next year. So, yeah, I hope so too. Thanks. Nice talking to you, Reggie. Absolutely. And, um, hope hope to see you 